not what I thought it was. And being a judge and having over a thousand women arrested a year for prostitution, and I was responsible for that. Quite frankly, I thought it was like the movie Pretty Woman. Anybody remember that? You know where Richard Gere and Julia Roberts get to dress up and go to the polo matches and ride around in Ferraris? Well, guess what? That's not correct. Um, it wasn't actually, I hate to admit my ignorance, but it wasn't until I was in arraignment court one day and we had triple the docket of domestic violence cases. And the prosecutors would bring victims up on my left and they would stand in front of me with fresh uh, marks from their abuse that they'd faced the night before. This is a picture from a hospital room. Very often occurrence that I would see. Um, the sheriff would then bring the defendants. These are the people that are accused of causing this abuse the night before. They would bring them up on my right, chained up on the wall in handcuffs and wearing a jail jumpsuit. The victims would continue coming up and speaking to me about temporary protection orders, and I can remember the bright red marks around their neck where they'd been choked to unconsciousness. Matter of fact, lucky to even be alive. And the sheriff would bring the next defendant out on the wall. Multiple, this is a multiple offender. These are individuals that basically are terrorists in their own home, terrorizing their families. And then I would see women with black eyes and their hair pulled out and burn marks on their skin where they've been tortured by cigarette butts. Arms in slings, it was really awful. And then another defendant would come out. Defendants that exert power and control even in the courtroom, pushing their attorneys out of the way in order to speak for themselves and try to control that environment. And then it happened. The sheriff brought the next defendant out on the wall in handcuffs in a jail jumpsuit. And maybe you can see like I did that day that she looked so much more like a victim of domestic violence than a defendant did. She has a name. It's Vivian. And I looked down at the file to find out who, who could be in this position and it said prostitute. And that's what caused me to do some research to try to figure out what happened to her. And really, ladies and gentlemen, the jump off point for women engaged in commercial sex starts at a very early age. This is a picture of Vivian at six years old, clutching her dolls, standing by the Christmas tree, her innocence still intact. And something started to happen to Vivian shortly thereafter and most of the women that get involved in this. Sexual abuse. The average age of sexual abuse of the women in our program is eight and a half years old. We find that this starts a reaction in their little brains and bodies that warps things that they know about relationships and how to use their bodies and what love is. But they understand that this isn't correct, that this shouldn't be happening. And quite frankly, the people that they trust the most are the ones that have betrayed them the most. And so they try to get away from this. As a matter of fact, one third of all women get involved in prostitution before they're 15 years old, middle school. And 62% of women get involved in prostitution before their 18th birthday, when they should be going to prom. So what happens once you get involved in this lifestyle? There are people that are looking for you out there, but quite frankly, it's so much easier to find someone vulnerable on the internet now using a smartphone in chat rooms, either Twitter or Instagram or whatever the latest uh, kick, whatever the latest app is. People are looking for folks with this, with this vulnerability. So once you're out in the lifestyle, what's your daily life like? This is a video, quite disturbing. Um, you're going to see a woman you see a man on the, on the left, and you're going to see a woman approach him in yellow shorts. And she's a woman who's a prostitute. This is 1.30 in the morning in Las Vegas, Nevada. 
This is security video from a hotel. She tries to get him to engage in sex for money, but he says no. He's not going to do it. So she walks back where she came from empty-handed. And then 12 minutes later at 1.42 a.m., this is what happens to her. This is her boss and her supervisor. After night, this is a regular occurrence for a woman engaged in this life. Who wants to do that? Who wants to have that type of life? Who wants to have that kind of a boss? So many of you wonder, why am I talking so much about prostitution? It's because if you have prostitution and the element of compelled, <coughs> then that's human trafficking. And compelled is when a person feels that they have no alternative but to comply with what the individual who they're working for wants. That can be as simple as taking advantage of a drug addiction, a heroin addiction. We see that a lot today. Um, it can be a potential threat. It can be survival. It can be watching others get beat up or yourself get beat up. It all comes together. We found in Franklin County, out of the thousand women a year that come through charged with prostitution, 92% fall within the definition of a human trafficking victim. That's a lot higher than I ever thought it was. And another very unfortunate reality that we saw anecdotally was that the average lifespan of a woman engaged in this, 34 years old. There's a cumulative effect of this, as you can imagine. Here's one of our ladies. This is just her nine-year journey. These are arrests. Prostitution, we say, is the revolving door of crime. Women who are involved in this are re-arrested 80% year after year. This is the same exact person, but when you get to the ninth year before when we first met her, She's actually unrecognizable from the very first photo. You can't even believe it's the same person. So when she comes to court, what would she see? What would she experience? Who would she talk to? How would she be treated? Well, we have a picture of me taken earlier this week. And this is what she <laughs> This is the traditional courtroom, right? This is the courtroom that you walk into, and I look at you, and I say, what is wrong with you? And when I would do that, or any other judge, or anybody in authority, or even someone like you, if, if you run into this, it causes them to shut down. You see, a stress reaction causes a trauma response. Right? If you're traumatized and you experience stress, you're going to be hypervigilant or dissociate. Those are therapeutic terms that a lot of us, including me, don't really understand, but we would see it as aloof, jittery, <coughs> or that word that all judges hate, disrespect, right? So we decided to try a new courtroom, a courtroom that instead of looking at you and saying, I wonder, or saying, what, did, what have you done wrong, I look at you and say, I wonder what happened to you. It's a two-year program, and I've got a great team of people. A lot of people of them are here tonight. But this is kind of what my team looks like. <laughs> They're not all in this photograph, but I thought this captured, this captured the essence of my team and the four people that I get to work with every day, right? Um, so I love that photo. Thanks, guys. So in conclusion, 
we found out some pretty miraculous things. The st statistics are awesome. The arrest rate has gone from 80% down to 29%. But here's the cool part. People like Vanessa, who's also on my team, she graduated in 2012, and now she works as my courtroom deputy. You're going to hear from her in a minute, but she got her son back. <laughs> Remember this girl? Unrecognizable? She got her life back. <laughs> Dear sweet soul Vivian kind of started this whole thing off. Well, Vivian got her dignity back and actually works. She owns that desk at the downtown law firm where she's the front receptionist. Woo! So in conclusion, I'd like to say it's not just a couple ladies that we're helping. This is actually a photograph of our graduating class of 2018. <laughs> it's a really cool thing, and I'm really happy to be involved in it. And prostitution is not what I thought it was, and I hope maybe it's changed your mind tonight, too. Thank you.